Hey everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I'm back with another one page wonder. So this one uses one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and I am going to give you the measurements, and I'm gonna show you the one that I made. We're going to then make two. I'm not sure we'll decorate both of them, but I'm gonna show you how by cutting the paper the same way, and then just depending on how we attach it, you can end up with a variety of fabulous one-page wonders. So this is an idea that I got from um, Liz at the Paper Project. She has a, a similar one-page wonder. I've altered it a little bit, and like I said, I'm gonna give us a couple of options. I love these little folds, or flips here at the top, um, and they each have you know a tuck spot behind there. So anyway, super fun. I promise it's easy. And then just however much time you want to spend decorating it. The papers I'm using are from Rach and Bella. This is their Nostalgic Noel collection. They're spore kits. There's like two background papers and then a fussy cut and then an ephemera kit. So this is what's being used for the Christmas craft off, the collaboration. Um, and I'm not sure that my video, I'm not sure if it went up yesterday or the day before, but anyway, I have... I'm loving these papers, so I went back and I'm using those, and I'll have everything linked for you in the description if you want to go check those out. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do, I'm going to find the papers I cut up, is um, you want your paper to be double-sided. So I've already cut mine up, of course, but I'm going to show you guys. It's super easy. Um, and it's easier... I think if there's no direction to the paper. So, you know, if, if there is, you'll just have to kind of fiddle with that and figure that out. But you're gonna start by cutting, it would help if I would turn the paper the right way, cutting your paper in half. So cut it in half on um, the 11 inch side. So now you're going to have two pieces that are five and a half by eight and a half. Save one of those. That is gonna be the base to your um, project. And I said that wrong, it's five and a quarter, five and a quarter. So once you've cut an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper in half, it's five and a quarter by eight and a half. Take the other piece and you're gonna cut it in half on the eight and a half inch size. Okay, so that you have two pieces now that measure, this one pretend it's not cut yet, four and a quarter by five and a half. Four and a quarter by five and a half. Keep one, and then cut the last one in half again. So now you'll have two pieces that are two and three quarters by four and a quarter. Okay, so it's basically cutting it in half and then cutting one of the halves in half and then cutting one of the halves in half, okay? And you end up with one, two, three, four pieces of paper. And then depending on how we fold and decorate, or fold and attach, you'll have different folios. So first I'm gonna show you how I did this one, and then I am going to show you attaching it a little bit differently. I also rounded the corners on mine. That's optional. I like that look, but I don't do it every time. So the first thing to do is fold in half your piece that is uh, the five and a quarter by eight and a half inch piece. It's looking for my bone folder. I printed my paper on uh, Nina White 90 pound medium weight cardstock. If you guys wanna see some of the tools and supplies that I use, visit my Amazon storefront. It has my paper, papers, adhesives, uh, stickers, all kinds of stuff. Um, it's an affiliate link and I'll get a few pennies if you do end up making a purchase, but it's no cost to you. So thank you. Thank you for checking it out. I'm gonna go ahead, I want this one to have rounded corners. So we're gonna go ahead and just round those because I wanna go ahead and get that done for the main part of our folio and decide which paper you want on the front, you know, and on the inside. Okay, 
So once you've done that, open it up and you're gonna take the piece, this piece that measures obviously five and a half by four and a quarter. Five and a half, four and a quarter. I think I've been saying measurements wrong, guys, and I apologize. For some reason, my brain is not engaging today. So I will have all the measurements listed for you in the description. Um, it really is just a standard piece of paper cut in half and half and half. But if you need those measurements, they are in the description, and it'll also go over where we're going to score the pieces. Now, for this piece, take your, this is basically a quarter sheet, and on that five and a half inch side, whoa, right here, five and a half inches. Yeah, I don't know where my score keeps falling out. We can just use the bone folder. Score on the five and a half inch side at one and a half. There you go. Super easy. Now, while I have my scoreboard out, let's go ahead and score these two pieces. So these are the pieces that measure four and a quarter by two and three quarters. On that four and a quarter inch side, score each one at one inch. Okay? It will be in the description of the video for you. All right, so let's go ahead and just get all of these creased. Creased. I already did this one, I believe. Now, this is going to be that flap that is on the inside, the, the right inside cover. So I am going to go ahead and I'm using the half inch, and I'm gonna round the corners while, when it's folded. So I'm gonna do all four, and then that is going to allow this piece to nestle right in there and look really nice. And then when we stick it down, we'll leave this open to be that tuck spot, okay? So set that aside for just a moment. Same thing with these two pieces. We are gonna round all four corners while they're folded. And that's gonna make the two flaps that we install on this side. And I really think that's fun. And I installed them so there's also a tuck spot underneath. Whoa. Okay, so these fit one here and then one here. And again, if you wanna turn your papers different ways, you know, if, if you would rather have it like this, you could do it like this. So if you play with it, again, I'm gonna end up decorating mine and doing all kinds of fun things to it. I don't know if we're gonna decorate this one or the next one we make, but once you start adding all of these pieces on here, it, it, the, whichever way you put the paper isn't that important. Just do what you like. Do what you think looks good. Okay. And of course, I'm going to do some inking. I'm going to use Walnut Stain Distress Ink. And I am going to ink all around these little edges. If you don't want to watch me ink, feel, forward. feel free to fast forward. Feel forward. <laughs> So I hope you guys are still enjoying the One Page Wonders. Um, one of my loyal followers um, that watches my videos, um, hello, said, uh, I think her YouTube handle is Honey Price with some numbers, I believe, but honey, she said, every time I see one of your One Page Wonders, I think, okay, this is the last one. And then surprise, here comes another. So I have not given up on the One Page Wonders yet. I think this is like number 36 in this series, which is kind of crazy. If you haven't seen the other ones, go back. Go back and watch them. They're fun, and you may have a new idea. If um, you're still enjoying them, let me know. I was thinking maybe I could set a goal of we'll get to 50. Is that too many? Is that obnoxious? It... Um, you know, sometimes they end up being kind of similar designs, but 
different papers, different way we, ways we install pockets, different flips. Some of them are completely different. So it's just kind of whatever I either find, like this one was inspired by Liz at the Paper Project, or can when I'm sitting here playing with folding paper that I come up with. So let me know what you think. And if you want me to keep going, I think I definitely want to do another one where we take a piece of paper and get multiple pieces of ephemera. I haven't done one of those in a while. And those are kind of fun too. Okay. And then before I install these, let me just get this inked just a little bit. And I just love these papers. Rach makes such beautiful kits. You get so many fun patterns and, again, the, the tags and the ephemera and all that. So if you guys haven't checked it out, um, go, go check out her kits. And, again, I'll have that linked for you in the description. She has a great website that also has all the information about the Christmas Craft Off collaboration this year. If you haven't watched my video for the collaboration, please go back and watch that. That helps all of us and it gives you all the information about collaboration answers hopefully your questions and tells you where to go get everything so go find that there because i really want people to hopefully watch that one and watch the other creators okay so again make sure you just have this turned the way you want it we'll install this page first and it's going to go here and flip open i guess we could even if we wanted to we could center it. I'm gonna bring it down like I, I'm gonna do it just like I did this one because I told you guys I would. I'm not gonna change it. So I want this, this part is the pocket that is going to be open. So again, I'm holding it by that side and we're gonna add glue to these three sides so that it still flips open, but it's a nice tuck spot. Then I'm going to hold it like this to get it lined up the way I want it. Okay, and I'm using my everyday go-to glue, PVA, Line Co. brand, putting the little bottles. Someone, if I don't mention it, or even when I do mention it, sometimes people ask, and that's okay. Ask if you have questions, <laughs> but I like to try to answer them ahead of time. Okay, now these, same thing, we're going to install the same way, one at the bottom and one at the top, so they open in opposite directions, and you just want to remember where you want your tuck spot to be open. I'm going to show you what I did on the prototype here in a second, because I didn't glue it down correctly. I'll show you how I fixed it. Mistakes happen and they are fixable. Okay, so that's that one left open here. And now we're gonna glue this one here. Same thing, leave it open on that straight edge right here. And get it. Now this one you do wanna bring away from this score line just a touch. I hope you guys can see that where I inked it for you so that you could see I came away just a little bit because you want this to be able to close nicely and you don't wanna to get too much of bulk in the crease, okay? Now, let me show you what I did on this one. I was crafting away, listening to Christmas music and I glued this one down with the glue on the straight edge and here and here. So it wasn't glued down here where I really needed it to because when you flip it open, it was acting all funky. But even worse, I closed up my pocket. So I just layered another piece of paper so we get a little bit more of a, a different pattern in there. So it worked out, it's kind of cute. And then I put this sweet little girl and her puppy in there, okay? So, if you mess yours up, just cut a piece of paper to be a little pocket and then glue it on these three sides and then there you go. It looks like you did it on purpose. All right. I love that you can put so many fun things in here. All right, and that's honestly it. The things that I did on the other one, I added, where did I add it? On this pocket, I did a 
on this flap, I added a little pocket. I used a piece of vellum, but you can use any paper you want. I just decorated these. I used my Velcro dots to help them stay closed. And that, that was it. And then just decorated it and made it look beautiful. So how easy is that, right? And depending on how you decorate them, you know, they stay pretty flat. So sticking inside a larger journal or um, sending in the mail or something. Okay, so let's set this one aside for now. And we're going to do another one. And guess what? The cut in the paper is exactly the same. So you cut one eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And I'm going to give you the correct measurements this time. I'm going to say everything correctly. This is now eight and a half by five and a half. What I said before. Set that one aside. That's going to be the base of our folio. And then on the other half of the piece of paper you have left over, you're going to cut it in half so that you have two pieces that are five and a half by four and a quarter. Save one and take the other five and a half by four and a quarter piece. I don't even know. Like this, yep. Five and a half by four and a quarter piece. Cut it in half so that you end up with two pieces that are two and three quarters by four and a quarter. Yay. Okay. Same thing. So now, got to decide what we want on the front, what we want on the inside. It's always really hard for me to choose. The papers are so pretty. And sometimes I spend a lot of time deciding, once I've printed some papers, which piece is going to be on the other side. Guys, you don't have to round your corners, but I'm going to make all of mine with rounded corners because I'm going to have three when we're done with this. And I kind of want them to, I don't know, look like a little set or something. It, sometimes I really spend time, that's what I was saying, of which papers to print on which side. This time I just threw the paper in and I just, whatever happened, happened, and I'm living with it. So there you go. Now, you have these two pieces. And, are these three pieces. And we can choose to do different things. <laughs> so we are. We're going to do something different. I am going to round this one on all four corners. Whoa. And for this one, I'm going to, I could have done, I could have done my scoring before I rounded the corners, but on the five and a half inch side, I am going to score at a half an inch. So get it, I don't even know if you guys can see that. Get it on your scoreboard and we're going to score it at a half an inch because, and I haven't planned this one out guys, I'm just playing. I'm just saying, okay, I'm gonna make a big flap. So now we're gonna have to round the corner again. No telling what that's doing in here. It's making some funky shape, but that's okay. If I had waited, it would have been better, but I didn't. And, you just trim that little piece that looks messy off. Okay, now I have a hinge that is going to let this be a nice flap, okay? And I may even put it all the way up to the top like that. And we might put a little tab or something down here that would look cute. And then when we open it up, I may add another pocket or something in here and we'll decorate, okay? So that's gonna be one. You could install it this way. Oh, that would look good even. We might do that. Ins install it with the flap on the back. Like that, okay? Depending on your papers, you can decide. And then with these two, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Um, Let's do, hmm, just going to think about it for a second. I've got this cute flower. How about we do, I can't decide. I can't decide if I want to try to do another gatefold and make that flower line up so that it opens one this way and one this way. Oh, let's do it. What the heck? Why not, right? 
So what I have to figure out is where we're gonna score these two pieces. And it looks like, I'm gonna give you the measurements here in just a second because I really want this to line up in the middle. We're going to, all right, this panel measures, this is what happens when I don't plan a project, but you're gonna also see how I figure things like this out. So we're gonna measure, these are four and a quarter. This piece measures five and a half. And I want to have Four and a quarter, five and a half minus four and a quarter is three, no, five and a half minus four and a quarter, guys, public math, ah, um, is one and a half inches, four and a quarter plus one and a half, no, four and one, one and one quarter inches, goodness gracious, five and a half minus three, yep, one inch and one and one quarter inches is what I need the two folds. So I know I'm confusing you guys. Don't worry about it. I'm going to figure it out of my head and just tell you. We are going to score each of these. And again, mine is all based on this pink poinsettia right here. If you don't really care about the pattern on your paper, you don't have to be as careful which sides you score from. But I want this one to be scored on this side, and I want this one to be scored on this side. And we're going to score it three quarters of an inch because that's going to give us plenty of room for this to fit in here. So see, we're going to have a piece there. This piece I want scored at three quarters of an inch, but on that side. So I just flipped it upside down. So now, hopefully, if I at least did the math somewhat close, I'm not on camera trying to do math, yay, it fits. We could have made the scores a tiny bit smaller, but easy measurements. Let's go for easy measurements, guys. Okay, now I am going to round the corners. Definitely, let's do, I'm going to start with just the two that are on where the hinges are. Yeah, I don't want to round those. Okay, and this is going to get installed like this, and they're going to open up like this, and there'll be something inside. How cute! Okay, so again, same, cutting the paper the exact same way. We're going to end up with a project that's quite different when it's all put together. So... Let me do just some quick inking and then we will, you'll see it come together. I'm not going to ink this side of that flap because I am going to let it show on the back and I just don't think I want it to be inked. Okay. Goes out of the way. This is going to get installed just like this. And I do want to make sure I don't come over on that crease line. If we hang over here, I don't think we're going to, but if we did, if we hadn't cut the paper exactly right, then all I would do is trim it off. It would be fine. The world would not end. Okay, so once you have it all lined up, again, it's right here. Close it up, hold everything nice and secure, and we're just going to add glue to this side of the flap. And we're gonna glue it down. And I didn't add ink there because it kind of just blends right in. It looks cute. And this is the front. Oh. And that flap's open. Now let's do our gatefold. A little bit of ink. I'm not gonna ink. I know I am. I don't mind having an ink line in between the poinsettia. I think it'll kind of highlight what we're doing. Get some ink in here. So leave me a comment and tell me which of these two designs you guys think you like the best. Do you like the one that I did the prototype with the two flips here? Or do you like this one with the big flip and the gatefold? 
tell me wh which one's speaking to you. And if you plan to make one, I would love to know. Okay, so the big thing here is getting deciding where I want to install these and then making sure they're lined up the way I want them. So I think that's how I'm going to install them. So we're going to do this one first so that I make sure I don't get too close to this edge. And let me put some ink on that score line for you. So I don't think I have even inked this part at all yet. There we go. We don't want to cross over. And I want mine approximately centered top to bottom as well. So ink just on the back of the flap. Not ink. Glue. Use glue. Ink is not going to stick it down for you guys. <laughs> oh, okay. Fun, fun. Okay. And I'm going to come just a little bit off or away from that crease. I went a little to the top, but that's okay. Cute. And I could have brought it all the way down. You know, you can put it wherever you want. Now this one, I am going to line up. I'm going to add glue to the tab, to the, to the hinge, and then I'm going to line it up with this edge. And it's going to look super cute, I think. And a lot of times I'll do gate folds and then put some kind of, like, twine closure or something like that there. But um, with this little poinsettia here, we'll figure out what we're gonna do in a moment. All right. Everything is lined up. Super cute. And that just kind of happened and I love it. Okay, so I hope that that was not confusing and that you guys enjoyed seeing how we can cut the paper the same way and end up with different folio designs. And there's more, you know, this is just two, just two ideas. Okay, so let's decorate. Let's, let's decorate this one so that we'll have one of each style decorated. I'm gonna have to decide how I want to make these flaps stay closed if I wanna use Velcro or if I wanna do something else. Before I, I'm gonna think on that. Let's go over here. I'm going to use a piece if I have it. So I have all these fun fussy cuts and fun labels, different things. Um, some journaling cards, tags, you name it, we've got it. Ooh, look at this tree. I wonder if the tree, yeah, we might save it for the front, we'll see. I'm not sold yet, but we'll see. What I'm looking for is I think, yes, I thought I threw some scrap pieces of vellum. Let's see if any of these are the right size. This one will work. And I used to use vellum all the time and I haven't been using it much lately, so I pulled mine out. I saw somebody using it in one of their videos here recently and I was like, ooh, something I sometimes forget that I have to use. Now, a lot of times with vellum, and I told you guys with my other project, I used I used it with my collaboration team project, is a lot of times I'll sew around it, but I am gonna just use glue. I use, um, a lot of times I'll use the art glitter glue because it does dry faster and making sure this is sticking down, but we're just gonna, I tried it using this PVA glue on the prototype and it worked great. So we're just gonna use it because that's what we have open. And when it dries, I don't think you see it too much. And it may be, I mean, it's the big, the slightest that you could see it. And that's where a lot of us like to stitch, but it's definitely holding. And with the pattern, I don't notice it. When I, if I'm looking for it, I can see it. So I think that's a good option. And I just stuck my finger in my ink pad. So we've got a pocket, but we're gonna wait until that dries before we play with it too much. I wanna make a little tab or a tab for something. Maybe I'll get out my whale tab punch. And I've got quite a few of the papers printed out. I was seeing if I could find a piece that has 
um, maybe one of the, with the pink here, the pink and the green. Yeah, why not? There we go. And then we also have this, if I wanted to put like a journaling spot or something, we'll see about that too. But for now, I'm happy with this. And we'll see how it looks now that I've got it folded and ready to go. I'm just thinking putting it here. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's cute. And we can add something else to it if we want to. Maybe put this side out. Okay. So I'm just going to glue down our whale tab. I usually do it this way. I put a little bit of glue on just that portion so that then... When I want to glue this portion down, it still will open up easily. And then I add glue to the whole little section. And now it's all glued together. Very sweet. Okay. So definitely going to decorate some. What are we going to put over here? We can add another pocket or tuck spot. We can just decorate. I'm also thinking this might be a fun place to put, to hide um, a journaling spot behind the gatefold. That could be a surprise. And we could then, you know, put like just a little tiny something to decorate the paper. Do we wanna do that? Let me see what size we'll need. If I want it to fit in here, it needs to be a little less than four inches, so like three and seven eighths by four and an eighth. So three and seven eighths by four and an eighth, and we'll have to round the corners. So I'm gonna just tear the paper. I'm using my grid to help me measure. I said three and seven eighths. This doesn't have the seven eighths, so we're just gonna go a smidge under four. It all works. There we go. And then one, two, three. What did I say? No, it was the four. The four, a little more than a four. Four and one eighths. One, two, three, four. We'll just go right here. It'll be close enough. And if it doesn't fit, we'll trim it off a little. It's just paper. It will be okay. All right, corner rounder. I'm feeling confident, so let's round these corners and see if it'll nestle in there without being seen from the outside. And then, so it doesn't look so plain, we'll put a fussy cut or something in there. Or some of the words. I love the words, too, the little Christmas words. Oh. I bet I have it turned the wrong way. <laughs> I did. I'm like, it's not fitting. Okay. It fits. You don't see it. You open it up. And ta-da, there it is. And if we wanted want to, we could take a piece of the pattern paper that coordinates and make like a faux washi tape strip. You guys know I love to do that. So perhaps we'll do that and put it on here. I'm going to glue it down. That would be pretty too, but we're gonna go it down so that this one is actually got a hidden journaling spot too. Makes it a little different from the other one. And this would be great to go inside um, a Christmas journal. And again, I'm being careful not to go over where those um, score lines are so that these fold up nicely. Nice. Okay, so then what I meant about making like a strip of faux washi is we can use this same pattern if we want to. It'll bring in this tab. And I'm going to take my ruler. And again, I do want it to be straight. So I'm going to use the grid. And I'm going to do a half an inch just a half an inch strip of paper. And then I'm gonna do the finger tear method. <laughs> and just put a little strip right there. 
add a little ink. Just dressing it up some inside. There we go, cuteness. Let me see, there's the sheets that came with the kit. I have them sitting here somewhere, if I can get some of my things that I have out, out of my way. Here we go. Words, 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 words. And I'm thinking, I don't know, what do we have? I got a Santa. It kind of takes up quite a bit of my journaling space. So maybe we'll do, how about a little ornament? Yeah, I like that. We'll do a little ornament. There's this spot right here that's making me crazy. It's probably just a little bit of stray ink from laying around on my desk while I'm crafting. Oh, I could cover it up with that. Let's do it. Why not? Yeah, there's all kinds of ink. <laughs> ink everywhere. All right. We'll just get it where it just covers that up and goes in that corner. And then let's cut out a word, put on here. And how about let it snow? Or how about joy? Joy's at the top and there's nothing wrong with cutting the one out that's the easiest and I love joy I think most of us like having joy in our lives all right so the question is do I want joy here do I want it on one of these flaps I think I'm gonna trim it down make it tiny you can leave them the standard length of course also move them around I think I just put it right there just to have a little word poking at us. These can get decorated as much or as little as you want. Now, I don't want to cover up the poinsettia because the whole the whole idea with this gatefold was so you could see that cute little poinsettia, but this is not staying close. And I'm afraid if I do Velcro, I don't want to Velcro in the middle of my, in the middle of my gatefold. I think we're going to have to cover up the poinsettia, guys. But this snowman's really cute, isn't he? Let's see what else we have. We've got a truck. A little baby deer is too tiny, but I want to use that baby deer somewhere. Let's see. Ooh, how about that? We could do a wreath there. Sorry, poinsettia, that gave me the idea to do this gatefold. <laughs> We're going to cover you up so that we can use this as a closure. So what we're going to do is we are going to glue the wreath half to this side and then do a Velcro here so that we can open it up with the, with the wreath and it'll open like this. Okay. And this isn't printed on the other side. It would Ideally, it would have been, but it's not, so I'm not going to worry about it. I am going to be careful how I apply my glue because I don't want it to come too close and glue my gatefold accidentally closed. So there we go. I did okay. And let's grab our Velcro dots. And again, if you um, are new to my channel, these are my Velcro dots I use all the time. Love them because they're super skinny and makes things not be quite as bulky. I don't mind when things get fluffy, but um, I, I, I like these. These work really well. And you can find them in my Amazon storefront too if you need need some help thinking about your supplies. Okay, set that aside. Very cute. So now that's gonna open like that and I'm happy with it. We might put a, how about peace on earth? Some more words. Before I put that on there though, let's decide what we're gonna do over here because that might impact it. 
So on this side, I, I do definitely want to see this pattern of the paper. So let's see what we have. How about just a package right there? Do very light inking. And we'll just have a present. And I like how even though some of the like some of the fuzzy cuts are in the more traditional colors, and then these are kind of more of a mint and a pink kind of in red, green, red and green. I love how it just all coordinates. It makes me happy. All right, I'm loving seeing this holly. We're definitely gonna to get to see this holly. Let's think about this pocket and what we wanna put in here. I haven't used any of these journaling cards from the kit yet. So let's put this sweet little girl in here since she's cut out. Okay. There we go. And there's some this size. I kind of like having a variety in my pockets of sizes. Not covering up her face. Now I want something on the pocket. Ooh, would this be a cute place to put baby deer? Yes. We're gonna put baby deer right there. And Maybe that's where we'll put peace on earth and we'll put something else if I still want a word over there in a minute. Yep, we got baby deer. You glue him down. And you don't have to decorate this pocket. It's kind of fun being able to just see through it. But I'm decorating mine because I want to. And we still have to go back and decorate the front as well. And we can add ribbons, you know, you can decorate this panel, uh, keep going, you know, just as much as or as little as you want will work. How about, I want another word and joy to the world was sitting here on this sheet. I'm gonna put joy. I don't know if I'm going to put it here or here yet. Let's get it cut out and see where we like it. Okay, one thing that would be cute if I had some really skinny, and I don't think I do, but little um, kind of this color ribbon, or it, I guess it doesn't even have to be that color. That would be, I'm gonna put Joy to the World right there. Fun to add an element to this wreath. And I lost, I think I even mentioned it the other day, while I was recording, I have lost my really skinny gold thread that I love using at Christmas. It's here somewhere because I had it, but I just don't know where it is right at the moment. Can't put my finger on it right at the moment. What can I put my finger on? Ooh, that's some glitter ribbon. It's thick, but we may put it somewhere green, red, red with snowflakes. Um, these are probably, these are thicker than what I was thinking. I was thinking super skinny and I have the Baker's twine that is white and silver that I've been using a lot, especially not being able to find the other super skinny that I have, but let's just see how this looks. We don't have to put it on there. I was trying to tie it more towards the end. Oh, it's cute. It works. So we're going to try that one more time so I don't use all this ribbon. I think this is my last piece of this particular ribbon. There we go. Eventually, it's going to be where I want it. Oh, yeah. It's a little large, but I like it. So we're going to put it right there. And I'm just going to use a glue dot. You could do hot glue. You could use a Fabrifix glue. But especially when I'm on camera, I like to do where well, you don't have to wait too long. I don't have to wait at all with these um, for it to um, dry. Okay. Now that does add some bulk, but I'm okay with that. And we may want a ribbon or something inside here in a little bit, but for now we're gonna leave it. 
and let's decorate the front. Ta-da! Now, I was thinking maybe this Christmas tree. So that's a thought. But I also like how I did kind of a tag collage idea over here. And now I'm thinking about this glitter ribbon that obviously I didn't remember was in my ribbon stash. Ooh, it's thin and it gives some sparkle. I don't know how it's gonna do like as a bow. Let's just see, cause I'm not sure. It's an interesting texture with the glitter on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I think it will do? All right, I'm gonna cut a piece. My dogs are barking. So my husband and um, our son Stephen, it's his his son, our oldest, are at are driving up to D.C. Washington D.C. to go to the NFL football game. D.C. D.C. Washington. Are they the commanders now? The Washington Reds, they, they're not the Redskins anymore. The Washington football team is playing Stevens' favorite, and he is um, a favorite team today. Don't tell me because I'm going blank on who that is, and he's probably going, Pam. Anyway, they're at the football game. This was Stevens' birthday present. His birthday's back in the summer. But Dan got the tickets, and they're going today because that's when the game is. Yeah, just a day trip. Uh, so that's where the boys are. That's cute, and it has some sparkle. So that's where they are. And so the dogs are, of course, letting me know everything going on in our house or in our neighborhood. Ooh, Santa. I think if I trimmed Santa down just a little bit, I may like him on here. So I'm going to trim it down some make it just a little bit smaller but we will still get some of that fun text and see just seemed a little big and i bet if i round the corners he'll fit so the day i'm recording this and i it won't be live for a while i'm sure but that's where they are and Little Harry and Matt are downstairs by themselves. So as soon as I'm finished with this, I will go spend some time with them. We will do some things downstairs. I don't let them come up to my craft room. Uh, they are not the best train, house trained when it comes to carpet. And we have some carpet upstairs. We don't have any on the main floor of the house. And so um, they do fine down there. They just, I don't know, they their feet hit carpet and they think, ooh, so we don't let them come upstairs. All right, I don't think as much as I was excited about this ribbon, we may use it inside. It's not enough of a contrast for me. So maybe one of these faux stamps. We'll see, maybe there. And perhaps, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Let's see, maybe we need another element. Maybe Santa, he has a satchel right here, maybe a present and a stamp. I don't really wanna cover up too much of him. Maybe like that. Well, I don't know. Definitely want some type of ribbon or lace or something. Let's see what we've got in here, my scraps. La -di -da. Oh, here's some baker's twine, and I have a whole roll of this, too. And then I used this, and I thought it went really well with the papers. That's some strips from some fabric I have, and I've been using it to make some bows and things. I wonder, maybe we could add a little sparkle to it and just do a, I don't know, just like a little, I'm gonna cut this like this and I'll show you what I'm thinking here in one second. We'll see if it works. 
maybe just that we, we attach on and have, but layer a part of the sparkle too, so it shows up some. I don't know. And if we put it under like this, or it could come out the side. Would that be better? I've been trying not to cover, or was trying not to cover up too much of the berries, but I think they're gonna get covered up. Ooh, maybe like this. Let's do this. I'm gonna staple the ribbons to the stamp. And it's going to go right there, like that. I don't know if we're going to use the package or not. Maybe that. Is that enough? You know, I always think, more, more. But let's just do that. I think that's going to be cute. All right. We're going to just go for it. Didn't I was thinking about using some of the tags and doing another little tag cluster collage. But Santa said, me, me, me. If I bring him over this way, I get just that teeny touch of the berry. Okay, now I'm gonna add glue and hopefully this will be enough to glue that down. I think it will. Okay, very cute. Very, very cute. Now this, I have not taken the time to ink yet. So let's just get a little bit of ink on here so we can see how it's gonna look. And we could decorate the back, you know? Again, decorate to your heart's content. Maybe we will. Hmm. I think I'll just stick that to this little tag right here since I took the time to tie it, and I do like glitter. I get a little bit of sparkle without having to get my glitter out and make a big mess right now. Okay. One thing that I thought of is I've got this journaling spot here. I might add a small one there later. I'm gonna think about that, just because then it would kind of, again, we would have that, um, that play of the colors and a journal spot, a journal spot, when you lift them up. Oh, I like both of these, I really do. And then I also showed you guys how to fold this first one. So it's here, ready to be played with and decorated. So tell me what you guys think. Uh, let me know if you want me to keep going with these one page wonders. If you think my goal is crazy or not enough or too many and um, also, like I said, go back and watch some of those other videos, any of them, um, and that you might have missed. That that would be wonderful. That would help my, my channel grow. So thank you guys. All right. Have a great day. And until next time, um, take care of each other. See ya.